Hi, my name is Ray Cody, and I hope by the end of my presentation, you'll all be really excited to start making your own games in JavaScript, HTML Canvas, and hopefully uh, some of the many gaming libraries available to us. You don't have to, but I really want you to. Um, so what you see before you is kind of a mock-up of a game I've been kind of working on. Uh, it's a, directly in HTML Canvas, so basically the only thing that's happening is when you move the arrow key, this little guy starts walking around. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it in the moment. All of these different blocks kind of have different properties uh, that determine what color it should be. So when we dive into the code, you can kind of see this is a React component. So I'm loading in the level from the state. And I'm kind of getting this uh, level prop. And that basically gives us the ID, the name of the level, and also kind of an array of blocks. I have you kind of see there's a lot of things I have to go through just to render that little thing. Uh, so I have this function called find objects, and I pass in kind of what I'm searching for. So this is kind of a way to keep track of the different types of game elements that I have. Um, because basically what's happening is that this thing is being cleared and redrawn each, time, each couple of frames or set time interval. And that's how it's able to kind of give us animations. So in order to draw everything, we have to keep track of where everything's at, which is why we kind of have to I have these different arrays. And then down here, I have another function that uh, draws all of these over here, render type. And it just goes through the array and, and updates them. Uh, so I have a basic uh, camera control, key controls that kind of control how it's moving and whatnot. And if this all is really convoluted, that's kind of the point. I want to show you how frustrating it is to try to, to work in Canvas. And so like, I showed my little brother this, and he was just like, oh, that's really, that's it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so kind of, we can just get rid of all this. Um, I don't ever want to see it again. Um, I'm going to show you kind of a better way. Uh, so this here is Play Canvas. This is kind of, if you've ever used Unity, um, that is kind of an editor that lets you, it abstracts a lot of the kind of keeping track of what we want to draw in terms of uh, smoothness of your rendering. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm just going to call it like my presentation. Um, these are different things you can put. We're going to ignore them for now. Um, so if you can see that you can fork, um, you can watch. So it's kind of like GitHub where you can collaborate easily by sharing these projects. So when we go into the editor, um, really different. Um, so this is kind of, this is the game right now. Like if I were to launch this, this is what my game looks like. And I didn't do anything yet. Um, and so some of the main components here is a camera. So this is kind of, if you were to update this, uh, you could kind of change what your game looks like. You can change the lighting. So if I wanted to have like really moody kind of game. And so kind of these layers of abstraction that kind of let us focus on building out the game itself, uh, the gameplay, and not kind of worry about how do I get something to render on the page at a certain location? How do I get this kind of cube to look right? Um, so we're going to use this cube. Um, you can see kind of when you select it, you can add different components. And one of the main components you can add is a script. And when you attach a script to an object, you're able to kind of control what that object does. So we're going to add a new script. We're going to call this uh, move player. And we're going to kind of script together how we are going to make this player move. So when you open up a script, um, it's not using ES6. That's why you see like this prototype stuff going on. But this is kind of how you create a script instance. Um, PC just stands for Play Canvas. And so these are the two main functions that you kind of have to get an understanding for. So there's uh, initialize and there's update. Initialize runs when the whole game is kind of loaded onto the screen. And it happens before any updates. So this is where you kind of would want to uh, load up your game, the level, uh, set up all the players and things like that. And then for update, this is where you would control what's happening. So kind of I'm going to demonstrate that with just a couple bit of console logs. 
Oh, and this is all in JavaScript. So if you know how to write JavaScript, you know how to make your own games. So I'm going to have a console log hello. And for update, it's going to console log. Yeah, can't spell all of a sudden. Um, so these are just telling me I didn't put semicolons, but and so you're able to just kind of update this. And you're probably wondering where exactly did the console logs go? Well, it's in the browser. And as you can see, this is running every single frame. But our hello only ran once. So what can you actually do with all that? Well, a lot, actually. That's basically how you control the whole game. So let's say I kind of have just a, a variable like um, days. This would be like days at full stack. And then when you initialize, that's when you started your first day. So days equals 1. And you want to log days. So that'll log once. So let's say you're only at full stack for like 100 days, and then you want to leave. So let's say if days is greater than 99. Uh, so to get to the entity that's a, that the script is attached to, you have to do this.entity. Um, it, it completes it for you. And this is a bit morbid, but to get rid of the object, uh, the function is called destroy. So we're going to destroy this object. And each frame, we're going to increment days. So probably wondering, what happens to this if it's being called kind of each frame? Will it just keep incrementing? So I'm going to console.log this just to show you that when we delete this object, we're deleting everything attached to it. And so I'm just going to console log another day at full stack. And then they. So now when I launch this, oh, I put in O instead of a zero somewhere. Yeah, I initialized it. That's the wrong thing. My bad. Life coding, you know? <laughs> Unhandled, so move player script. Console is not a function. Uh, where is that? Oh, dot log, another. <laughs> it's the nerves, you know? Yeah. Uh. And then it disappeared. Um, I guess it kind of, it's happening so fast that it kind of logged it a couple extra times. So this is kind of where we would want to put in our basic controls to kind of listen for keyboard inputs. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot of documentation. Um, I kind of have my handy notes here, so I kind of know <laughs> the syntax for it. So we're going to listen to a couple keyboard inputs. And I'm going to pull a whole cooking show. I kind of have this set up for us already, because uh, <laughs> we're running out of time. So here's our player move. And we're listening for if keyboard is pressed, we're looking for the right key. We're looking for the left key, and we're looking for key up. So in our editor, this is the object we attached it to. Um, you can see we have our script right here, player move. Um, I wasn't supposed to show this yet, so now when our player moves around, it's listening to the keyboard, but kind of it can go off camera. So. <laughs> That's a problem, but there's a real easy fix to this. Um, if we make the camera a child of the, the cone, or kind of the block, uh, it should, just like that, start following it around. And so it'll always be centered, because I set up the camera to be directly above. Um, so what you see above here is kind of another script that I wrote. Um, if you want to get more into depth of this, I'll probably have a blog post going in depth about how I set this up. But it's a basic um, script. I have this object called, so we're assuming I'm passing in my level, and I have this blocks array. 
it has x and y coordinates that I can kind of set the location. And there's a bunch of these. So then, basically, we have this function called spawn cube. You create a new block entity by saying, uh, kind of instantiating it. You can add components. So I'm telling it I want it to be a block. You load materials from the resource by over here. You go to assets.findResource. And all of these are kind of, here are the assets. So anything you have here, you can reference by assets. Here in the root, you can reference anything by root. And we're basically going through this block array, and we're rendering, we're creating these. And that's how you see them kind of blocking around. And so it was a little bit rushed at the end, but like I said, uh, more in depth, you can look at the blog or just dive right in and kind of create your own games. There's these tutorials, very helpful. And that's all I have for you for now. Thank you.